Hi, I'm Stephen Perkins, and welcome to Drum Set 101. In the next half hour, we're going to talk about the drum set, the components of the drum set, drum vocabulary, how to set it up, how to tune it, and the anatomy of a drum set. We're going to get and dissect it. We're going to take it apart and put it back together. And when you get to that point, when it's all together and it looks like this, you get to have some fun. Hi, I'm Stephen Perkins, and welcome to Drum Set 101. First chapter, the anatomy of a drum set. The drums and the hardware. Let's get started. Right here is the snare drum. This is the heart of the drum set. This is the drum that I started on. Now, when you have a snare drum, you start with a drum, and you have a throw off, and the snare wires. When you put the wires on, you get the buzz. That's the snare sound. And you take the wires off, it's more of a tom-tom or a timbali. Snare drum. Next is the bass drum. The bass drum is the sound that gives you a nice low subsonic knock. Usually the drum is a 22 inch diameter, 14 by 16 or even 18 inches long. And that's the bass drum. This is a tom mount. And what are toms? These are toms. They're called rack toms or tom toms. This is a 10 inch, this is a 12 inch, and they sit right in front of you like this. Usually you go from small to bigger to, to even the biggest. And 10 inch, 12 inch, and the final drum is on the floor called a floor tom, which is a 14 inch. Sometimes they even go to 16 or 18 inches. And this will be mounted with legs. And you'll have that sitting here. So you have your snare, two toms, and a floor. Now how do you get those toms up there? With what we like to call tom mount. Now this is for your rack toms. You put that in your bass drum, and it's quite simple. I'll show you that a little later in chapter two, but you basically just hang your drums on what I like to call the L's. Ah, now the hardware. This is a snare stand. It's got a basket, which is the snare basket. It's got a tilting mechanism, so you can tilt the drum close towards you or make it flat, which I like to play my snare drum flat, actually. And these are tripod stands because of the three legs, thus tripod. So your snare will fit into this basket. Your toms will be on those. Your floor tom on the legs. This is a bass drum pedal, also known as a kick pedal. This can be called a kick drum as well as a bass drum because you're kicking it. The kick pedal, we'll get into the more of the details later, but basically this is the beater for the pedal and you're hitting your head with it. This is a cymbal stand called a straight cymbal stand because of course it's straight. Most drummers will wear their ride cymbal here and I myself like to wear it kind of low. This is a boom cymbal stand, B-O-O-M, because it has a boom to it. And that way you can get your crash cymbal or even another ride cymbal or splash closer to you and at different angles. And this is called a hi-hat stand. Hi-hat pedal, chain driven hi-hat rod. This rod goes up and down with the pedal. And this is called a hi-hat clutch, which one cymbal will sit here, one cymbal will be in the clutch, and as you put that back on the rod, they close together. Now all this is trying to imitate a marching band. You've got a guy on bass drum, a guy on snare drum, and a guy on cymbals. Well, how do you make that happen with one drummer? With a drum set. And back in the days, the late 20s, 1920s, they would call this the contraption. And that's how it became called the trap kit. Finally, very important, is the drum seat, which is also called the drum throne because we're the king of the jungle, aren't we? We like to bang on things and we have to sit on our throne. So you got the throne, you got the drums, 
you got the hardware, you got the pedal, and you got the tom-toms, the snare drums, and all the different kind of details we'll get into in a minute. But this is chapter one. This is the Anatomy of Drum Set. I'm Stephen Perkins, Drums 101. Hey, I'm Stephen Perkins. Welcome to Drum Set 101, Chapter 2, The Components of a Drum Set, which will include a basic vocabulary of your drums. Let's start with the snare drum. This is the heart of the drum set, the heart and soul of a drum set. It all starts with the snare. Now, let's get into it slowly. First thing you want to look at is this. This is a snare throw-off. Back here is the butt plate. Between the snare throw-off and the butt plate, are the snare wires. They're held on together by those two components. Now with the throw off, off, you get a tom-tom. On, you get the snare buzz. Now this little piece here dials the wires on tighter or, you know, if you want them looser. A lot of drummers like them tight. Now when you flip the drum over, you'll see the snare wires. And where the snare wires fit against the drum is called the snare bed. Now you notice each drum has a hoop. On the snare drum, the bottom hoop will have two slots. One slot will go in front of the throw off, the other in front of the butt plate. Now these slots are basically used to put either a plastic tape or a string, a tight string, to hold the wires on. As you can see, the string goes through the little hole into the butt plate. This is the bottom head. It's called the resonant head. It resonates. This is the head you hit. It's called the batter head, because you batter it. So you got the resonant head and the batter head. You got the snare wires, the snare bed, the throw off, and the butt plate. That's basically what's different from a snare drum from the other drums. Now all other drums will share these things in common. Tension rods. This is a lug, and this is a lug receiver. I'll explain it a little better right here on the tom-tom. All righty. This is a tom-tom, a 10-inch drum, 10-inch in diameter. It's a wooden shell. This is called the bearing edge. Quality drums will have a flat edge, so the drum head can fit onto the drum snugly and correctly all the way around, which makes for good tuning. So when you get your snare head on the bearing edge, you take your hoop, you place your hoop in place, you'll take your tension rod, the tension rod will go through a small hole in the hoop, which ends up into the lug receiver, which goes into the lug. Each tension rod is threaded, each lug receiver is threaded. You put those together, and that's how you tune your drums. We'll get to that in a minute. Now, how do you get these rods on correctly? With a drum key, which has got a square tip, and same with the tops of your rods. Now make sure you have a bunch of drum keys. One in your pocket, one on your keychain, a few on the drum set, because when you lose one of these, it's very difficult to find something that fits it. Once you find one that fits, it's a perfect fit, and you can tune your drums. The drum key is used all around the drum set. We'll get back to that and tuning in a moment. Chapter three, we'll check out tuning. So now you've seen this. Now a bass drum is usually 22 inches in diameter. Some will come in 20, even 24 to 26 inches, but the norm is 22, and they'll go to 14 to 16 inch, 18 inches long. That's your normal bass drum. Now I showed you on the snare and in the toms, you'll have a metal hoop. On the bass drum, you actually have wood hoops. And these wood hoops work exactly the same. They hold the, the heads in place, the front head, the resonant head, the head you hit, the batter head. Usually on a bass drum, the front head will have a little artwork and maybe the name of the drum company or something in the front, so you'll know that. And when you wanna put these drums on, these heads on, you'll put them on just like you did with a tom-tom, using the wood hoops and also the claw hook. These claw hooks will hold these hoops in place. And that's how you tune your bass drum. Now, how do you hit your bass drum? Also, the bass drum is sometimes called the kick drum. 
and this is called the bass drum pedal or kick drum pedal. We'll get back to that in a second. So that was the bass drum, and I showed you the 10 inch tom. This is a 12 inch tom. Most drummers will wear their drums 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, small to large. So on this drum set, I'd have the 10 here, I'd wear the 12 there, and this is a 14 inch floor tom, I'd put this here. So this is identical to the 10 inch tom as far as all the components, it's just two inches bigger and a little longer. Now we'll go to the floor tom, which is gonna sit on the floor, and instead of mounting it with a tom stand, which I'll show you in a minute, these are mounted with legs, and it sits on the floor. The same exact drum though, it's got the edges, it's got the rod, it's got the lugs, you know, it's got the hoops, it's got the wooden shell. One thing I wanted to show you is each drum will have an air hole or a vent hole. When you have two drum heads working against each other, there's a lot of air inside the shell. You need a hole to let some of the sound out, to let some of the air out. So the bigger drums, like I said, will have two holes. Most of the drums will have one. So you got your vent hole, your air hole. You also have a badge. The badge will tell you the type of drum company it is, the series, maybe even identification numbers. Badges are important, especially to collectors, because the older drums, you can find out how authentic they are and where they came from. And on the newer drums, it's just a beautiful reminder of what kind of drums you like to play. So that's the badge, that's the vent, these are the legs. When you're mounting your floor tom, you'll be using legs, and the legs will go into tom brackets, which are these. Right here. You put your leg in your tom bracket, and then from there, you have a lot of options as far as angles and different heights, and each drummer likes their stuff in different places. Some drummers like it tilted and low. Some drummers like it high and flat. That's why there is so many options with a drum set. All the different components will give you different options for angles and stuff, and that's real important because every drummer's got a different size, style body. So, snare drum, bass drum, 10-inch tom, 12-inch tom, and the great floor tom. These are the drums of a basic drum set. This is a five-piece drum set. Now let's get into the hardware. This is how you hang the drums and how the drums stay in place. First thing we want to look at is the bass drum hardware. To keep the bass drum in place, you've got bass drum spurs. Now the spurs will fold back when you're ready for storage or putting the drums away. And then they fold forward when you're ready to play the drum. And they stop the drum from moving because you're actually hitting the bass drum with your foot over and over, the drum wants to move forward. That's what stops it. Now these little rods are telescoping. You can bring them in or out. As far, if you bring them out, you get the drum to tilt. If you bring them in, the drum stays flat. I like my drum flat. Some drummers like it tilted. These are bass drum feet and spikes. These will keep the bass drum from moving. Like I said, playing all night with your foot the drum's gonna start to move, so that kind of digs into the carpet, keeps it in place. Very important. Now right here is your bass drum tom mount. It's a mountable tom stand into your bass drum. Now basically, it goes right into there with this rod. This is a memory, memory lock, which is used for two reasons. Number one, when I want to know the height, tomorrow night I've got a gig, I pull this out of the case, throw it in, I've got the same height that I've always had, it's perfectly locked. And also it used, it's used, in case this loosens up during the gig, this still is not gonna slide down any, it's locked into place, which I think is great. So, let's mount these toms on this bass drum mount. Oh, before we do that, let me show you this little piece. This is an auxiliary clamp. This is great. If you're into like maybe mounting another cymbal on your bass drum, there you go. If you want to put another tom, you can put a tom out there, cowbell, wood block. It's basically an auxiliary clamp for any other kind of instrument you want to put there. Even an electric pad, you know, would be great there. So, 
tom mount. How do you hang your tom? This is called an STM, which most quality drums will have some kind of rack mount system. Uh, suspension tom mount is what STM stands for, and that's a sus suspended tom, really. This is the tom bracket, which I showed you on the floor tom. The tom bracket goes right into here. I like to call it the L arm. Some people call it the tom arm. And the tom arm has all these options for tilting, to keep it flat, different heights, different angles. It's really all about comfort. So once you find your comfort, you tighten it up, it's in place, you've got a rack tom. That's what people call them. Not only tom toms, they call them rack toms. And not only do they call this bass drum, they call it kick drum. So as long as you know that. All right. Now we got the drums, the floor tom, and the toms mounted. How are you going to do your cymbals? This is a straight cymbal stand. It's a tripod stand because it's got three legs, tripod. You open up the legs, and from there, you can set the height of your cymbal. I like my ride cymbal, which is usually the cymbal here above the floor tom. I like mine low. But once you get your cymbal in the right height, you can tilt it. It's a little tilting mechanism, which is nice. These are felts. This is a wing nut. Take the wing nut off. You'll put a cymbal on top of one felt, another felt on top of the cymbal, and tighten it into place. Now underneath this, this is called the cymbal seat, which protects the cymbal, it keeps it flat, it protects it from rubbing against the threaded metal, and keeps your cymbal looking and sounding great. You gotta have a cymbal seat. There you go. So that's the straight stand. This is called a boom stand, which is nearly identical to the straight stand, except for this one piece, which is the boom piece, which is great because you can get your cymbal closer to you and at different angles and different heights. A lot more options than the straight stand. A lot of people will put a crash cymbal here or a china cymbal, and they'll have a ride cymbal on the straight stand. Now, what's great about this is not only can you get it in all these different positions, you've got the tilting from this part, like on this one, you can tilt. But then again, you've got more tilting options here at the boom area, which is great. This is called the tube joint, where the rod fits in. So the rod fits into the tube joint, and the boom stand can be set to your liking. On some drum sets, you'll have memory locks on the cymbal stands. On this drum set, we have one on the tom stand. We have a memory lock on the snare stand, which I'll get into in a second, and the hi-hat stand. That's where we are now. The hi-hat stand is quite important. This imitates a marching drummer smashing cymbals together but instead we go up and down with them. You start with your pedal, which has got a heel plate, the pedal. It's chain driven. The chain pulls the hi-hat rod. I'll undo this for you so you can really see what it is like. You take this apart, and here is the hi-hat rod. You unscrew it with your hand just so I can show you. It's a threaded rod, and it's actually threads in here. This is the piece that goes up and down. You thread your rod into there. Hand tighten. Then you put your stem on, which has a memory lock. So I got the right height that I like. And that fits in there. And this is where you're going to put one symbol, which has got the symbol seat here. You got your felt. Then you put your other symbol on the hi-hat clutch. You take the bottom nut off. There's two felts, you put the symbol between one felt, then another felt between the, the other side of the symbol, and you tighten up. Some drummers like their hi-hats real tight, some like them kind of loose, you know, it's all preference. Then you'll find the height that's right, so the symbols will now clap together. Now underneath, you'll see a little screw here. When you screw this up, it tilts the bottom symbol, and that tilt will help the ch sound. When there's too much air, you're not going to get a nice chick. Once you tilt the cymbal up, it gets rid of some of the air, and you get a better sound. So that's what that tilt is for. So that's your hi-hat stand, which is also a tripod. Now we're going to the snare stand. 
Again, a tripod stand. You want to open up the legs to keep some balance. This is called the snare basket, which also has a memory lock on it, which I showed you. The snare basket has got a dial so you can tighten the basket. Most snare drums are 14 inches. Some are 13, some are 12, some are even 15. That's why you have a different size basket to get the basket to open up or close down on what size you need. This also has a tilting mechanism if you like to tilt your snare drum towards you or away from you. Some drummers like it perfectly flat, some like it tilted. So we got that in position. Grab the snare drum. Now this is the throw off. Some drummers like the throw off exactly looking at them. Some like it to have it on the side. I put my throw off on the side. Unscrew the basket to make sure the drum fits correctly in there. And once you get the fit, you can tighten up the basket. Don't over tighten the basket because it can choke the drum. You don't want to squeeze the drum too hard. But it's nice to have it tight, tight enough that you can lift the drum and the, and the stand comes with it. So that's how that fits. And like I say, you can get different, different heights and different slants. So snare drum, tom toms, floor tom, bass drum. Here's the bass drum pedal. All right, let's talk about the bass drum pedal, also known as the kick pedal. This is the bass plate. This is your pedal board. This is your heel plate. This pedal is chain driven, spring tension, and this is a cam. This is the toe clamp that hooks on to the hoop. When you wanna get that into place, you'll have your bass drum hoop underneath this spot and you tighten the toe clamp into, into place. Some drummers like their tension real tight, some like it real soft. That's where this comes in. I like mine very soft. And you get your, oh, also this is the beater. The soft felt side for the beater, and then you got the hard plastic side. I'm a rock drummer, so I like to use the hard side. It gives a little more punch. But it's really about preference. And you can get that onto your hoop, tighten it into place and you got yourself a bass drum. Drum key, cymbal stands, tom stand, bass drum, snare drum, tom tom 10 inch, tom tom 12 inch, floor tom 14 inch, hi-hat stand, kick pedal down there on the ground, and also very important, is the drum seat, also known as the drum throne, because we are the king of the jungle, we're the king of the band, we're the king of the stage, we are the drummer. We need to sit on a throne. That's chapter two of Drum Set 101. Hi, I'm Steven Perkins. We're gonna set up a drum set together. All right, let's get into it. This is a five piece drum set. We're starting from scratch. First thing we want to do is open up the boxes. There's going to be a lot of stuff in here, so you want to make sure you put it aside, make a few different piles. First thing we're opening, these are bass drum heads. Make sure everything that can be recycled is recycled. Got to stay green. All right, let's pull everything out slowly but surely. Ah. Got to get into it, rip, tear, get into your new drum set. All right, this is a Tom Tom, and this is another Tom Tom, a 10 inch and a 12 inch. Move this out of the way. All right, bass drum pillow. That's used to muffle the bass drum. We'll get into that in a minute. This is a bass drum hoop. And the beautiful bass drum. All right. One more hoop in there. Some literature and a sticker, can't beat that.
Like I say, don't forget to recycle. All right, so we're getting there. Look at that, Stephen Perkins DVD available on DW. That's a great advertisement. All right. Let's get into here. Now don't lose anything. Make sure everything's put in a spot where you can get to it because you're going to need every piece. This is uh, hardware and drumsticks. All righty. This is a tom mount and a bay, uh, floor tom mount for a suspended floor tom. Make sure there's no extra hardware in there. Nope. All right. This sounds like a snare drum. There she blows. And the last drum, last but not least, the floor tom. All right. Get all the plastic off each drum. Examine your drum, look at the beauty of the drum. Get very excited like I am. Now, everyone gets their first drum set. It's not quite sure how to set it up and what position everything goes in. That's why I'm here, to help you get through that. There's a lot of options for tilting and heights and angles. And that's really just for the drummer to get comfortable on the drum kit. Then again, we got the floor, uh, floor tom, 10 inch tom tom, 12 inch tom tom. Now the tom toms are put together. We got the heads on both sides, the STM and the tom mount, they're all there. We do have a little work on the bass drum though. So let's move these out of the way. All right. Okay, let's get all this little protective padding off the hoop. Now these drums just came from the factory, so they're probably not tuned up. So you might have to spend some time tuning them and possibly tightening up some of the stuff. But basically out of the box, a couple things and you're ready to play. And I'll show you how to get there. Now I remember I got my first drum set was 1980, believe it or not. And it was only three pieces. We're doing a five piece today. But it was very similar to what we're looking at now. All right. So to get into this bass drum, a lot of the hardware in here is for the bass drum. So let's get into it. Gorgeous paint job, isn't it? All right, first things first. These, as I explained earlier, are the spurs. So when you realize where the spurs are, they're gonna be in front of your drum. That means your resonant head will be going right here. Just so you know, the resonant head is the head with the artwork. Sometimes black, sometimes not. You'll fit this head onto your edge. You wanna make sure the logo is exactly straight on top of the bass drum. So here's your mount, which is exactly straight on the bass drum. So match that logo with that. Unless you want to have it crooked, but there's no reason to. All right, so you got that matched. Ah. Grab one of the hoops. You'll notice that one side is very flat and one side has got a kind of a, a bend to it, the very flat side down. And let's get into our claw hooks and tension rods. All right. So, these are our tension rods. Extra long for the bass drum. Inside is also a drum key. Keep everything close. You don't wanna have to search for it. 
And here are your hooks. It's quite simple, actually. Ah. There's one more thing I have to put together. For each tension rod, there is a little washer. So you put the washer on, the end of the tension rod, you take your little claw hook, you put it into place, which is a right, gonna be directly in front of your lug. Make sure the head's on straight before you start tightening. Now, once you get this through, you kinda wanna do kind of just a, a, a simple hand tightening. We'll get to the key in a minute, but you get all the, all the hooks on and go for a simple hand tightening just to get it into place. So there's one. Now it's a lot of work, but it's worth it. It's your new drum kit. And you really don't have to do this more than once as far as starting from scratch, but as far as changing the heads, you have to do it quite often. Now when I put my tension rods on, I like to go across the drum instead of just in a circle, kind of like you're tightening a car tire, you go across. So we'll start over here. Do this one just the same, hand tighten. So we got one here, one here. Let's go over here. Like I said, you want to cross the drum. Now if you tighten everything on one side, you're going to make it lopsided. So that's why you want to do it evenly on one on each side. We're going across. So we got all these on finger tight. Let's just go a little tighter to keep them in place before we flip on the other one. Then again, try to use the going across the head to keep it tight. Don't want to tighten it too much because your tuning comes next. Just get it into place and get rid of some of the wrinkles in the drum head. Make sure everything's kind of snug so when you move it around, you don't lose anything. All right, that's a good start. So, that's the resonant head of your bass drum. Now that we have the resonant head hand tightened, let's go to the batter head. First thing we're gonna do before we put the batter head on is throw the pillow in there. The pillow is used to muffle the bass drum. Without a pillow, the bass drum, boom. With the pillow, boom. So you want a little muffle in there. We want to put a little of the muffler on the resonant head and a little muffler on the batter head. Once we have the pillow in place, you get the batter head in the right spot, putting the logo on either the top or the bottom. Get your hoop in place. And then from there, we'll start just like we did on the other side of the drum by hand tightening each tension rod with the actual claw hook onto each lug. Now one thing you might notice is you'll get some extra lug receivers. These are just extra in case these are lost or broken off. So the lug receivers go into the lug. These are extra, you got those. So we'll hand tighten these and go across the drum just like I did on the other side. And once this drum head's in place, we'll get into tuning. So let's do this. Like I say, after you hand tighten, you'll get the drum key out and we'll tighten it for the correct tuning. Now you'll notice after you set up your drums, you'll have possibly one or two extra tension rods. These are just extras in case you lose or break one or some of the threading gets unusual and it's not threading right. You've got an extra one to back up. That's a great thing about the drum set is that you need more than one of these little pieces, just in case you lose them. Like this, the drum key. I always have more than one drum key. Once you get these things into finger tight, we'll go to the drum key and tighten them up and get rid of the wrinkles on the head, and we'll get into tuning. So, we put the batter head on. This is the hoop. We use the tension rods, which are threaded rods, which went into the lugs, and this is tightening the head up. 
Now again, it's all about preference when you're tuning. The bass drum has got a low note, kind of a thud. The tom-toms go from high to low, ooh, 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 ooh. And the snare drum is sometimes fairly tight. All right. So there's your bass drum that should look like this when you're done. And like I said, we'll tighten these heads accordingly to what you like. All right, now your drum set is fully assembled. Let's set it up, let's get it comfortable for you to play it. First thing we're gonna do, let's mount the tom-toms. This is a bass drum mount. Goes into the bass drum with the memory lock, put it into place. These are the L arms, also tom arms. You're gonna take your 10 inch tom, usually the first drum. You're gonna take the batter head, which is the top head, make sure that is closest to your bracket. You're gonna put this on, tighten it into place, and from here we can adjust different angles as far as flat or tilted towards you. I like mine a little bit tilted. So there's the 10 inch tom. This is the 12 inch tom, same exact thing. Make sure the bracket is where the batter head is. This is the resonant head, the bottom. You hang your drum, tighten it into place, find the right angle. When you like the angle, tighten that. Raise it up a little. You don't want it to rub on your drum, so make sure you have nice distance between the shell and your drum. All right, those look nice. Now we're gonna mount the floor tom. These are tom mounts, but instead of going on an L, you're gonna use legs. Thus the floor tom. You get three legs, just like a tripod stand. Most of the stands come in threes with the legs. You get the floor tom legs into the brackets. Tighten those. Place the floor drum, floor tom down, and then you can tilt as you like it with the legs. Some drummers like it flat, some like it tilted. Pretty comfortable. You want to get it kind of snug near the bass drum. You got your 10, your 12, and your 14. Now the snare drum is going to be mounted on a snare stand, tripod stand. Open up the legs fairly wide for good balance. And then you've got your snare basket. Your basket can be opened or tightened depending on how big or small the snare drum is. Most drums are 14 inches in diameter. That's what this drum is. Now this is the throw off. Some drummers like the throw off facing towards them. I like mine on the side. That's just my preference. So you get the snare into the snare basket. Make sure that the butt and the wires aren't touching any of the clamps. You tighten up your basket, make sure it's nice and snug. Not too tight, because you don't want to choke the drum. It is a drum that rings, so you don't want to tighten it too much. Just enough to keep it in its basket. Then you place that right in front of your legs, right between your legs. I like mine flat. Some drummers like it tilted. It's all preference. That's the great thing about the drum set, is there's so many ways to, to wear your drums and tilt it and heights that everyone has their own style, their own body language. You make it comfortable for yourself. I like the snare right in front of me, kind of flat. Now let's get to the bass drum pedal. It's a pretty simple mechanism. Now with some of the drum sets, it'll come with a little piece of rubber. This piece of rubber will be stuck on your hoop right where the clamp goes to make sure you don't damage your hoop and also it makes it more snug and secure. So it's got a little sticker. You stick it on your hoop. This is your hoop. It goes right here. You'll, you'll tight, or loosen it to get it in there. Your hoop will be there, and then you tighten this to make it nice and snug. Get it in there. All right. Drumsticks, very important. Drum key. 10 inch rack tom, 12 inch rack tom, 14 inch floor tom, 22 inch bass drum, also known as kick drum. This is a 14 by five snare drum, or five by 14. That's another thing, the sizes. If they say five by 14, that means the drum is five inches deep by 14 inches diameter. 
This could be a 9 by 10. This could be a 10 by 12. That means how deep it is, and the 10 is diameter. So we got 10, 12, 14, 14, 22. This is a five-piece drum cat. Get some cymbals up there and have some fun. I'll see you next time. Hi, I'm Stephen Perkins. Welcome to Drum Set 101, the chapter on tuning. We're gonna do a basic tuning of a snare drum. What you need for tuning? Drum keys, your ears, a drum, and a drum head. Let's get started. Now let's listen to the drum sound before I get started, how low the note is. Very loose, out of tune drum head. So what we wanna do is grab a drum key. If you notice, there's numbers on this drum head. Just like a car tire, when you tighten it, you wanna go across. You don't wanna go in a circle because it'll tighten unevenly. So number one, let's give it a turn and a half. Number two, same thing. Three, and so on. Three to four. Now do the same thing, a turn and a half for each one. That way we can get an even tuning to start with. Now not all drum heads will have the numbers but still use this idea when you tune, even though it doesn't have the numbers. You can already hear the drum has gone up. Now what you want to do is check each lug to see if they're tuned together the same. Pretty close, because I turned them each one and a half, but I still want to go up a little more, so let's keep going. Back to one, let's do a half a turn, over to two, and so on, three, four, five, six, and seven, and eight. Some snare drums will have 10 lugs, some will have eight. All right. We definitely got it higher now. That means it's working. Now, if you want to listen closely to hear the tuning, let's listen to seven, let's listen to eight. Eight's a little higher. You got to listen closely. So you take seven up just a little. Go around the drum and do the same thing. Some drummers like to use their fingers, you can really hear it. See, it sounds like five is a little low. So you'll go around the drum and make it even. Now to me, I think I'm gonna go up a little more, but before we go up anymore, let's take a look at the bottom head. This is the batter head, the head you beat. You batter that one. This is the resonant head, it resonates. Now on a snare drum, the resonant head is very thin. On most drums, the tom-toms and floor toms, and even bass drum, it's not quite as thin. But for the snare drum, it's real thin. So be careful when you're tightening. Use the same idea, go from one to the side to the other. And the bottom of the snare head, to me, should be pretty tight, because you want it to vibrate these snares nice and sensitive. And if it's too loose, you won't get that. So we're gonna do a, a turn and a half, one across. Do the same thing. Now, I don't know if you can hear it, but I can hear it. You can hear the whole drum tuning up as we go. Now, the trick is with tuning is being a very aware and listening and also preference what you'd like to hear. Because the way I tune my drums might not be exactly the way you want to tune your drums. But let's get a start here. Let's listen to the bottom head. It sounds like this side can go up a little. Now it's real important to keep an even sound around because that really creates a good drum sound. Now with high quality drums like a DW kit, inside the shell, they'll stamp the note. The actual shell will ring at a note. And then you can tune your heads to that note, which will make the drum resonate in perfect pitch. All right, so let's check the bottom. Pretty even all around. Put the snare bed on, and let's listen to the note. I'm gonna tighten the wires just a little. Nice, bright, very sensitive, kind of a white crack, crack. Now when you take the tom, when you take the throw off off, sometimes the snare to me will remind me of a timbali. That's how high you wanna tune it. So on my kit, I'd probably go a little higher than this for my preference, so let's take it up a little. Over to one, two, three, 
and so on. It's really about preference. When you tune your tom-toms, your first tom will be a 10 inch usually. Boom, boom, 12 inch, doom, doom, 14, boom, boom, and 16, boom, boom. Do, 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 boom. That's how you tune your drums, really. And then you have your bass drum, which is really subsonic. Ooh, ooh. Now, when I tune my drums, I like to start with my floor tom. Because if I start with my smallest tom, I find that I tighten it, and by the time I get to the floor tom, it's too high. So I like to start with the lowest drum. That's my preference. Start low and work your way back up. The same thing goes with all the drums. Top head, bottom head is the resonant, top head's the batter. You want to get the note on your top head and get the bottom head to resonate. Ooh, so the top head is really the note you're looking for. And the bottom head holds the note. So we brought this one up a little. Let's take a listen. Nice, bright, sharp, snappy, sensitive. That's how you tune a snare drum. And I hope you have a good time. I've been tuning drums for years. It takes a lot of time and, and ears, but if you do it right, you'll be very happy with it. Good luck. Hey, I'm Steven Perkins. Thanks a lot for checking out Drum Set 101. We learned everything from how to set the drum kit up, from each little piece, the whole anatomy, the vocabulary, everything. You know as much as I do now. Now we get to play. This is the fun part. I like to pop in the earplugs first. And let's do a little John Bonham. <laughs> 